before I start going on about border radius, I should introduce myself, I guess. Uh, I'm Leah Varu, you can just call me Leah. I work at W3C at Developer Relations. And if you've ever heard my name before, it's probably one of, because of one of my open source projects, uh, the most popular of which are Prism, Dablin, and Prefix Free. If I'd had more time, I would probably go on about them, but I should rush. Has anyone heard about them before? Quite a few people, thank you. So when I started designing this talk, I wanted to make, to design a creature that goes along with it, uh, kind of personify border radius. And I thought, how would border radius look if it was a cartoon character or something like that? And I, I thought it would look something like these uh, characters in children's books that uh, everybody thinks they're uncool and nobody talks to them and everybody makes fun of them because, you know, they're not cool, but they end up saving the day and being the hero. So that's what I pictured. <laughs> you might find it amusing, but maybe not. Uh, so when you first meet it, border radius looks kind of like this. You may have seen it before. I guess you have. So there is uh, one value. It controls uh, how curved the corners are, basically the radius of the semicircle at those corners. And if you increase the value, that radius increases, and if you decrease it, it decreases as well. And you might have heard about how great its browser support is. You don't even need to use prefixes anymore. Although I've, and you, didn't, you never needed to use prefixes in Opera and IE, although I've seen monstrosities like that, like O border radius or MS border radius, but those things never existed. So yeah, that's all there is to it, to border radius. Like, there's nothing else to know about it. So. Thanks for coming. Enjoy your lunch. Bye-bye. <laughs> Wait a second. I think I had more things to say. Yeah, because, like, if, if that's all border radius is about, why does it need six pages of the specification to describe it? It seems pretty simple, right? So one thing is that you can have different radius per corner. I'm sure most of you uh, have seen that before. So you can have two, three, or four lengths. If you have one, it controls the radius for all corners. If you have two, the first one controls the radius of the top left and bottom right corner, and the second one controls the radius of the top right and bottom left corner like this. You can have a third length that controls uh, the bottom right corner, and if you have four of them, each controls its own corner separately and they go in clockwise order like everything in CSS. Everything that accepts multiple lengths in CSS goes in clockwise order, not just border radius. So, to summarize, uh, when you have two lengths, they each correspond to a different longhand property. And why do you need to use longhands? They're, they're quite useful in a case where you have something like this. So you only want to set one corner uh, to be different, um, but using the shorthand requires you to repeat a value three times, so it's much better, much better to use just this and use the longhand, like uh, border, bottom, left, radius, zero. So don't repeat to yourself uh, anything, you, anything you code in CSS, you'll eventually have to change it at some point, so make it easier for your future self. So this summarizes how it works. When you have two values, each corresponds to two declarations. If you have three values, the, the first one corresponds to just one corner at the top left, and the third one as well, and the second one corresponds to two corners, uh, the, bottom, uh, the top right and the bottom left. And when you have four values, each one just sets one corner. So I'm sure many of you have heard that you can set different values for different corners before. So this is where things start to get interesting. Here we have a typical water radius declaration for, which sets the top left corner at 900 pixels and all the other corners at 90 pixels. Uh, it could be, it could look like this, but for brevity is, it's like this. So the dimensions of this box are basically, uh, I can just spell them out and nothing will change. I think the width is uh, 400 and 540 pixels, and the height is 
420 pixels. So as you might have noticed, the 900 pixels does not fit. So you end up with something really strange. Like when I increase the border radius here, did you notice that every single radius changed? I'm just changing the top left radius, but they all change. Why, did that, why did, does this happen? And the reason is that since the border radius does not, that we specified does not fit, like if, if, the board, if, if the browser tried to apply this border radius, we've set like 900 pixels uh, and 90 for the other corners. So we needed to have at least 900, 990 pixels on every dimension, but we don't. Our width and height are much smaller than 990. So the browser needs to scale our border radius down. And there are many possible ways the CSS working group could decide to go with this, but they, uh, they decided that uh, the browser will scale every radius on every corner by the same amount, so that the, the proportions between the radiuses uh, remain the same, even though the actual radiuses uh, change. So in this case, we ended up having a radius of 38 pixels on the top uh, right bottom left uh, and, and the bottom corners, and a radius of 381 pixels on the top left corner, which is not what we specified, but they have the same ratio between them. The first one is 10 times as much as the other ones. So in the wording of the spec, uh, when the sum of any two adjacent border radii exceeds the size of the border box, UAs must proportionally reduce the used values of all border radii until none of them overlap. If it doesn't make much sense in that kind of wording, just remember what I said, if it doesn't fit, the browser shrinks all the radii so that they fit. By the way, both radii and radiuses are correct. So that's for the grammar Nazis around here. And if you find mass easier to understand, it looks like this. Uh, every every radius is either the specified one or the width multiplied by the ratio between the, uh, the two radiuses on that side. And by the way, I'm using MathML for this equation. MathML is quite awesome where it's supported and when it's not supported, you can just use a CSS fallback. Here I'm using Firefox, so it is supported. So it's just native MathML. And as a recap, what we just learned or already knew, your mileage may, may vary. So we can have different radiuses per corner in clockwise order, separate properties for every corner are available, like border top right radius, and if the sum of two adjacent radiuses or radii exceeds the length of their side, they're reduced proportionally, which is, I think, the most important uh, thing to remember for, from this section. This is a quite cool demo that somebody made just using border radius, well, in some JavaScript, uh, and just using border radius in a not like super advanced way, just using different radii per corner. And I think it looks pretty cool. Like you can click the boxes and make like infinite shapes and it just adjusts and it uses CSS transitions. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so it, you can make uh, infinite shapes with it. Uh, so, We've set out to create an ellipse with what we've already learned about border radius. So obviously, when we have an ellipse, every corner has the same radius, so we don't need multiple lengths here. So here we've specified 210 pixels. It's half our height. If we reduce it, we see what happens. And if we increase it, we can't increase it above uh, 210 because of what we said before. So. Nothing we try seems to create an ellipse. And that's because we can't create an ellipse with what we've already seen. We need to use border radius in a different way. So you can add a slash and specify different horizontal and vertical radius. So here, this is equivalent to what I've had before because they're both equal. Let me show you. And, but now you can adjust either of them separately. And there you have it. There's your ellipse. Or you can do like any number of different shapes. But in this case, we wanted to make an ellipse. So let's go back to that. The problem is 
this looks like an ellipse. That's what I wanted. But if I increase the width, it doesn't look like an ellipse anymore, does it? It's, it just looks ugly. I'm not sure if, how that shape is called, but it's not an ellipse. Yeah. So do I have to go back to border radius and change it every time my shape changes? Uh, actually, well, that, that could be one solution, but there's a better one. So we can just specify it in percentages, like 50% horizontally and 50% vertically. And since they're now equal, uh, the specified border radius is, uh, is the same, both horizontally and vertically, even though it doesn't compute to the same uh, radius, we can even remove the slash and just have board radius 50%. So now, regardless of our dimensions, we have an ellipse. So we've seen how we can make an ellipse, but can we make like half an ellipse with border radius? We can use percentages and different radius per corner to make half an ellipse. So wh what is half an ellipse? Horizontally, it has 50% radius, and vertically, it has 100% because it's like the curve takes all its height. It has 100% radius in the top two corners and zero in the bottom corners. So let's try this. And now we have half, half an ellipse. And if we make the dimensions, if we make the width half of the height, we can have a semicircle. OK, now we've seen how we can have an ellipse and half an ellipse. But can we have a quarter ellipse? A quarter ellipse is actually even easier than this. So obviously, the width needs to be equal to the height. So let's try something like maybe 400. And what is a quarter ellipse? The top left corner is 100% both ways, both horizontally and vertically. And all the other corners are 0. So it would look like this. That's a quarter circle. And if we change the dimensions, we just have a quarter ellipse. And we can have lots of interesting shapes with if, if we use border radius wisely. So just to sum up, um, here's how it works. The number of values uh, before and after the slash can be different. Here it just happens to be the same. But here, for instance, we have four values before the slash and three values after the slash. They're expanded into, the browser expands them into four values independently. So like you can have one value before and like four after it. And another thing to note is that when either of the two is zero, both compute to zero, because you can't have something with like a 50 pixels vertical radius and zero horizontal radius. How would that look? So they, they have to both compute to zero. So what we just learned, we can have different horizontal and vertical radii. Percentages and border radius refer to the corresponding dimension, either width or height. Border radius can take up to eight lengths if you're crazy enough. I've never needed to use eight lengths, I don't think, but you can. And when either of the two radiuses uh, is zero, both compute to zero. So here are a few demos that demonstrate that this complexity in border radius is not just intellectual masturbation of the CSS working group, but it's actually useful. So Simurai, who is like really awesome with CSS, made these buttons, and he's used like every single thing I've mentioned so far to make them, and I think they look so cool. Like, look at this shape, or this. He's used, he used elliptical radii and different ones per corner to make the illusion of depth. And the 3D effect is just box shadow. So you should go there and have a look. I think they're awesome. This is less practical than the buttons, but I think it's quite fun. It shows, like, all these shapes are just border radius. And here's a little example of mine. I've used uh, percentages and border radius here. Um, for the languages, whoops, yeah, that won't work. Sorry, Firefox. Okay, yeah, I think that's 100%. So I've used them here for the languages and here for the button, and the whole thing is just CSS. There's just a background texture for the pebbles, and all the shapes and everything is just CSS. 
So, how many of you ever wondered why is water radius called water radius? Why isn't it called corner radius? Like all the examples I've showed you before just use, uh, they don't use any borders. So why is it called like that? Why did we name it border radius? Does, has anyone, how many of you have wondered about this at some point? Okay, maybe I'm weird. <laughs> uh, well, I've, I used to often wonder about this. Like corner radius sounds like a much better name. It was called border radius because uh, it rounds the border box, which is the same. It, it, there's no difference if you don't have any borders, but in this case, the 40%, uh, the 40 pixels refers to the outer radius. The inner radius is smaller. Oh, not this again. Yes, zooming. So here we just saw that if you've zoomed in Firefox, the computed values are that, that it reports are different. That's why it had like 21 point something. Now I've zoomed out and it's correct. So the inner radius is, 80 pixel, is 20 pixels. If I increase the border, the inner radius becomes smaller. And well, obviously it can't get smaller than zero, but you might end up not having a radius at all uh, if your border is too large. And the, the, the inner radius is actually the specified border radius minus the width of the border. And if you have different uh, border widths in every side, th that still applies. And you might have different horizontal and vertical radius on the inner side, as you will see in a few minutes. So in the wording of the spec, uh, the padding edge inner border radius is the outer border radius minus the corresponding border thickness. In the case where, where this results in a negative value, the inner radius is zero which is what I just showed you. If you prefer maths, it kind of looks like this. The inner radius is the maximum of zero because it can't be negative, or uh, the outer radius minus the, borders, the border width. And this is how it looks when you have different border widths per side. So if you notice here, I've specified a regular border radius, just this, uh, part of a circle and you can see that it works fine for the outer edge but the inner edge is an ellipse it's part of an ellipse it's an elliptical curve so and, and and there's the same thing here the outer radius is 40 which is part of a circle but the inner one sorry but the inner one is an ellipse which is something we may or may not like so assuming we like it, everything is great, but if we don't like it and we want to change it so that the inner radius is part of a circle, we don't care about the outer radius, but we want this one not to be elliptical. We don't like this. We want this to be a circle. So how do we go about it? We can just override border top right radius and increase the horizontal radius so that it balances the border widths we have. So we can specify 50 pixels horizontally and 40 pixels vertically. Note that when you're using the long hands to specify different horizontal and vertical radius, you don't need the slash. There are so many cases where I've used the slash and I was wondering why is my CSS not applied? This is not correct. This is. So now we have a regular curve on the inner of our box and obviously the outer, uh, the outer radius is elliptical. So in some cases, we might prefer how this looks, or maybe not, but now you know how to do it. So what happens when you have different border colors per side? So here we've ha we have this border color, but let's assume we want to to, to, to create the illusion of a harder shadow. So we specify black on this side. As you can see, there's a hard transition between the two colors and it's only affected by the, the difference between border widths, the ratio of the different border widths. It's not affected by the border radius at all. 
we can change it and the angle remains the same. The same as when we don't have any water radius. I recall there were so many discussions in the CSS working group about what this angle should be. It took a long time to decide on something. So this might be inconvenient for cases when we're trying to emulate this kind of 3D effect, but it can actually be quite useful for some other cases. Like if we reduce the dimensions here, you might see where this is going. And we specify one single border width. So, and we can change this to any colors of our liking. Like, I don't know, this or green and red and whatever. I've actually used this before to emulate a, um, a Wi Fi signal with like one of those and a pseudo element inside. So I think it's fun. I, I, so I wanted to show it. You may or may not agree about its usefulness or practicality, but you can't disagree, it's fun. <laughs> so what we just learned, border radius rounds the outer border edge. Uh, the inner border radius will be smaller or zero. Even with a circular radius, the inner one might be elliptical if different widths are involved. And if the borders have different colors, the transition will be abrupt and diagonal, the angle thing I've showed you. So border, border, uh, the border properties do follow border radius. Do all CSS properties follow border radius? Let's take a look at box shadow. You're no, you can no notice here that Water, box shadow is also rounded, and it has this, the exact same rounding as our border radius. We can ch tweak its rounding if we change the spread radius, like if we make it bigger by 10 pixels, its rounding will also be bigger, and as we increase the spread, its rounding increases as well, because that's what looks more natural, and obviously we can also do the opposite. If we if we specify a negative spread radius, its rounding will decrease. So box shadow does follow border radius, but other properties don't, like outline. You can try all you want, but the outline will not follow your rounding. Regardless of what rounding you have, or what outline you have, it just won't be rounded. In Firefox, you can round it with this horrible proprietary property called Moz outline radius, uh, and let's specify something like, I don't know, 40 pixels. It doesn't even follow the border radius. You have to specify it, you have to specify it separately, and it only, it only works in Firefox, and it's pretty horrible. So is, is there something better we can do? Remember what we've showed before about box shadow. We don't need those stinky outlines. We can emulate that effect with box shadow. If we just specify box shadow with no blur and no offsets and just a positive spread radius, we can have the same thing and it just naturally follows our border radius quite nicely. So we don't need those outlines. And it even behaves the same. It doesn't affect layout, just like outlines, which is what, if we could use a border, but borders affect layout and we might not want this. So what we just learned Box shadow follows the curves of border radius and spread adds to the border radius or negative spread uh, subtracts from border radius, which is basically the same thing. Outline is always rectangular. It doesn't follow it, but we can emulate an outline with box shadow. So here's another thing that most of you already know, but some of you might not have thought about. Since border radius accepts length values, it's animatable, so we can make pretty cool animations with it. Like here we go from a smaller radius to a bigger one and we can do things like this, which is kind of like it's dancing, or we can do things like, let's try something like this, like a semicircle of sorts which kind of looks like it's jumping. 
you can make many cool things. If you think of anything else that's quite cool, you can submit it here. It's a gallery of animations and it only has two about water radius right now. Everybody just submits transforms. I, I'm so sick of seeing animations with transforms. I mean, they're cool, don't get me wrong, but let's explore some other possibilities. So what we just learned, water radius is animatable. We can animate between any two radiuses, percentages, um, M's, viewport relative units to pixels, whatever. And border radius affects the hit testing area. So here, I should specify overflow hidden because otherwise I have an inner object. Um, so you can see that if I hover here, the effect is not triggered. I have to actually hover on the area, on that area, on the rounded area. That's why border radius was a huge revolution from the background image solutions we were using, not just because it was easier, but also because unlike other solutions, it affects the hit testing area. So here's another caveat. Border radius is all fine and interoperable if you're using it in CSS, but what if you're using scripting? Is it interoperable, interoperable there? So here we have a border radius that has like pretty much almost everything I've told you so far. It has percentages, it has different units, different values per corner, curves that don't fit and they're scaled down. So what happens if you're trying to get the computed style? So let's suppose we're getting that element and we're calling get computed style on it and we're querying border top left radius. Most browsers return 100%, which is what we specified. Firefox is being smarter and it resolves it 100% to pixels and it also scales it down to what was actually applied. Because here we don't have a radius that's uh, 100%. We have 360 pixels and 280. And if we try to get the top right radius, similarly, all browsers return 80 pixels which is the M's we have converted to pixels, so they at least bother to do that. But they don't do anything else. Firefox is smarter. It returns the actual used value, which is really convenient. That's why I'm using Firefox for this presentation. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do this cool showing the curve thing. I don't use Firefox on, on a daily basis, but it's really useful for this talk. So, what we just learned, there are incompatibilities in scripting and water radius. Firefox converts percentages to pixels, all other browsers report percentages, and when the radius doesn't fit, Firefox reports scale down sizes, all other browsers report specified sizes. So, I have five more minutes, okay. Um, so some of you are, I'm sure many of you are quite advanced and he knew everything in this talk. So this is my secret weapon, this uh, section. Have we seen everything about water radius so far? Are there any changes coming? So in, in CSS Backgrounds and Borders 4, of which I'm an editor, there's a really cool property. I didn't come up with it. Uh, Elika Tamad did, but it's an amazing property, which is called border corner shape. So border corner shape will get keywords, and currently it gets one keyword, but in the future it will get, uh, will change the spec and it will accept different keywords per corner. So if you have curve, you get the default effect that we've seen in this talk. Cur a curve just gives you curved corners. You can have bevel that just cuts corner, at, that creates this sort of effect. And it's not just useful for this effect only. You can have a number of cool, you can do a number of cool things with it, like you can do polygons of sorts, you can do diamonds, you can do triangles. Let's see, it would be 50% horizontally and 100%, see, hexagons, triangles. We're going to huge lengths today to make triangles. It should be simpler. 
or you can do like arrow shapes, uh, like this. This is simulated with SVG, by the way. It's border corner shape is not supported anywhere yet. So you could do like this breadcrumb kind of shape with it as well. And there's also a scoop value, which creates this effect, which some people call negative border radius. And you can have a notch value, which is arguably less useful than the other ones, just creates this effect. But you can use it to make crosses and stuff. So border corner shape is really cool, but even if it gets implemented, it will be, it will be a while before it does. I, I estimate it will be at least a year before we get the first implementations, and that's if those who don't want it in the spec don't win. So what can we do until then? Are we stuck using background images for those effects? There is another way. We can use gradients, and that way we can tweak them from the CSS. Like Now I'm just changing the size of one of the corners. And here we have four linear gradients and each occupy a quarter of our element. That's why background size is 50%. You can see it more clearly if I change this. Like every one of those gradients occupies a quarter here. And you can do something similar with radial gradients as well. And you can still tweak them quite easily. Although in some browsers, they're, they're a bit aliased. They're uh, not as smooth as background images. So as I'm nearing to an end uh, in this talk, you might feel like you've forgotten anything, especially everything, especially if you've learned something new today, which I really hope you did. Um, so what can you do if you feel you've forgotten anything? First off, my slides are online. So if you've kept notes, that wasn't a good idea. Um, or you can use these resources to remind yourself. Uh, well, the first two are, web, are from webplatform.org. How many of you have heard about webplatform.org? Yay! They're getting more. So uh, webplatform.org is uh, a, an effort by W3C and several other companies like Adobe and Microsoft and Google and Opera and Mozilla and like all the big players of the web. Uh, to create a single documentation resource with the community because it's it's a wiki so if you find something wrong instead of complaining you can fix it and it's vendor neutral it's not con it, it's not controlled by a single vendor like all the other resources we've had so far so I think it's quite amazing I have a few stickers with me if you, if you'd like one just find me afterwards and this is the link to the specification. I didn't include the, a link to the CSS backgrounds and borders for specification because that's still an editor's draft and I kind of felt guilty doing so. But if you can find it quite easily, because you know, editor drafts are not normative or anything. They're not specifications, they're basically just ideas. Oh, one minute over time. Um, so before I finish and before I go into the Q&A section that we probably don't have time for it for, here is the question I usually get after my talks. How, was, how did you make this? Was, was the web application? Yes, it's a web application. The entire slide deck was built with open web technologies. The slideshow framework is something I've released like two years ago, but I keep adding to it. It's called CSSS. The illustrations are built with SVG. Mr. Border Radius's face is animated with smile. Uh, and the equations displayed will, were, will, were built with MathML, like I've already mentioned. So, thank you very much. This is how you can contact me, and this is the link to my slides. Thank you.